My name is Stuart Pym. I am the Doris Duke Professor of Conservation Ecology at Duke University in North Carolina. I'm here in the rainforest of northern Borneo to talk about biodiversity and talk about the difference in biodiversity between spectacular forests like this one and forests that have been cut. And the person who has studied that for National Geographic is Professor Roger Kitchen. As a National Geographic Society grantee, he's been looking at the differences between forests like this, primary forest with big uh, buttress roots, trees that shoot up into the canopy, and forests that have been cut, logged, sometimes many times. How different those forests are is vital if we're going to protect biological diversity. But not all of the forest around here is primary forest, i.e. forest that has never been touched. A good fraction of it is secondary forest, forest that's been logged and sometimes extensively logged. Large areas of this secondary forest surround the principal forest preserve at the Danum Valley. And the question conservation biologists have is how valuable this forest is for protecting biodiversity. The answer to that comes from not looking at this forest in the daytime, but coming back at night and looking at its moths. That's a tiger beetle. That's a tiger beetle. See, see it's, it's, and there's a tetrid. Did you see that? Down? That's a sort of orthopteran. But it's got that nice point, point. There's another one. Nice oh, point, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, backward pointing extension of its thorax, one. which is characteristic wow, of this group of tetrigids. Um, what else have we got? There's a beetle, of course. Little yeah. scarab beetle. There's a tiny moth. There's a, there's a, there is a um, mayfly, yeah, ephemeropteran, a very small one, yeah. and, but oh, it's got it. rabbit. What? It's too big to put in this. No. Um, watch out for the nut. There's a bug, look. A sucking bug. That, um, <laughs> she, oh, what's yeah, that described? There's a nice knock, knock to it. Did you want me to... No, take it, take it. Go. No, no, no. The moth. <laughs> well, you seem very interested. Well, I am very interested. I'm interested in everything. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I'm going to get a over there. <laughs> <laughs> Professor Roger Kitching is um, at the School of Environmental Sciences at uh, Griffith University in, in Brisbane, Australia. He's a National Geographic grantee. Roger, would you tell us about your National Geographic grant and, uh, and what you're doing here in the, in the rainforest of Borneo at night? Well, the National Geographic grant was to make a study of moths here. This is a particularly good place to study moths because our best estimates from this very place in Sabah is that there are something like 3,800 of la larger moths. So if you're interested in questions that you think can be answered by moths, you couldn't be in a better place. We pose the question of how has the conversion of primary rainforest like that behind me changed with rather heavy logging that's gone on all around this region. So we looked at moths in both the primary rainforest, the undisturbed primeval rainforest, and we looked at moths in the disturbed rainforest that has been logged at various intensities over the last 20 years. Our particular question was how do the groups of species moths you're going to find turn over from place to place, change from change to place to place. To what extent is one group of species replaced by another? The general hypothesis is that in the secondary forest, where, which has been logged, there has been a process of homogenization, that there has been losses of species, only rather generalist species have persisted, and so as you move through tens of kilometers of secondary forest, you may reasonably expect to catch the same group of moths every time. In contrast, in primary forest, we expect there has been fine grain differentiation of the assemblages, the groups of species of moths from place to place.
Is this true? We don't know yet. We spent the last two years here, spending considerable periods of time here with small light traps and light sheets like this, collecting that data. The data are all in hand now. We have sites here, sites 100 metres away, a kilometre away, 100 kilo, uh, uh, 10 kilometres away, and 60 kilometres away, and a similar set of sites in the secondary forest. How the two differ will give us the answer to our problem. Thank you.